Hello. I'm going to run through uh, a sharpening procedure and a conversion to a one bit per pixel line art image uh, at what Photoshop calls a bitmap format. And uh, so what I have to start with here is this wonderful old piece of line art from a about 110 year old um, textbook or children's book and it's got it's just full of these wonderful drawings and the intricate detail you'll notice when you get up close the scan of this has been done at pretty much capture every bit of detail in the scan no contrast has been added and so you can see the imperfections in the paper the old letterpress uh, didn't get down in all the crevices so uh, we want to clean this up and try to get as much of the line quality back as we can. So zoom back a little bit here. So our challenge is that we want to hold these lighter details in these denser areas when we get this finally converted. So I'm going to do a couple things here. Uh, I'm going to work very carefully. I'm going to say image duplicate. I'm going to leave my original alone. I'm going to say this is the old Millstream copy. So I'm working on the copy now. Uh, the very first thing I want to do is uh, straighten this image out because um, I put the antique book in the scanner and got it as straight as I could. I didn't quite get it totally straight and so if you look down here you'll see that uh, I'm not quite straight. This type here, I am assuming, was locked up in the old letterpress chase as uh, perfectly horizontal, and I didn't get it scanned that way. So you can see that it's tilted a little bit. So here is a really great trick. <clears throat> Go to the ruler tool. You draw yourself a baseline as if you were measuring underneath the type. Draw a baseline on the type here. Try to get it kind of consistently going through all of the parts of the baseline. There we go. So now that is following the baseline. I go up to image. I go to image rotation. I go to arbitrary. And look at this. It says, judging by your measurement tool, you're 0.63 degrees off of horizontal or vertical. So I just go OK. Boom. It straightened me out. Isn't that wonderful? So I've got that going for me. <clears throat> I notice over here that when I scanned it, the spine cast a little bit of a shadow because I didn't want to smash the book into the scanner too hard. Uh, so I want to minimize the effect of this darkness. That's going to mess me up later. So I'm going to double click the background layer. Just let it rename to layer zero. That allows it to be transparent. I'm going to make a selection over um, this area here. I'm. This will select the um, just this part here. I'm going to make a layer mask and. Because I selected just the strip, it uh, it masked off everything but the strip. No problem. I just select the layer mask, go up here to Image, Adjustments, Invert, and it flips that mask around. So now I've got the worst of that darker area taken care of. I could go in here to um, the paintbrush. Now my, my mask is black where it's knocking things out and white where it isn't knocking things out. So I can make sure I have a fairly hard brush, pretty good size. And the color is going to be black with the switcher tool there. I just flip it to black. So I could go in here and kind of quickly hit some of these problem areas. And I don't have to be super careful, but this kind of takes a little bit of the need for any cleanup out of here. So I can see a few smudges and things here. There's a smudge right there. So uh, most of this will just automatically go away, but 
doesn't hurt to knock it out a little bit. So there we have our starter image. Now I want to um, increase the contrast on this. There are a couple ways you could do this. In fact, there are a lot of different techniques. We've looked at some things by uh, David Blattner and Bruce Fraser out of the Real World Photoshop book. Uh, they have some fairly specific procedures that they like to follow. Uh, one way that you can increase contrast is uh, levels. It's one of the most accessible when you're first starting out with Photoshop because it's really obvious what's going on. Here's the maximum white tone in the image and I can adjust that and I can collapse things here which I don't want to do but I could sneak in on the the light tones a bit and I I can kind of dial out the the noisy texture in the paper scan. I can come up on the other end which flattens out my, my blacks. It'll clip all of the dark gray information to solid black as I pull this pointer up here. Now I want to be careful in my dark crosshatch areas that I don't plug those up so I'm going to pull back here a bit. So there is a, a way you could use levels to do this. So uh, there's that amazing transformation. Um, I'm going to use even another tool here. So here's curves. Curves are uh, essentially the same thing as levels with a lot more control over the middle points. Uh, the curve, uh, think of it as the lightsaber, the elegant tool of the Jedi versus the uh, blaster of the uh, stormtroopers. So um, here's my dark area. This does the same thing as the, the uh, dark pointer on the levels tool. So I can come in here and I can kind of darken things up a bit. Do the same thing on this end. I can pull this in and just keeping it down low so I don't make my values gray. Um, so I'm going to come in just a bit here and I'm going to zoom in a bit so I can kind of see what's going on. I think I'm going to sneak up on this a bit. I'm going to put a little extra point in here to give it sort of an S-curve so I can bring some of those near values up. <laughs> Might even do an S-curve on this end, kind of dial out. You can see some of those pieces of paper texture melting away as we do this. <clears throat> so this just makes me feel a little bit more comfortable that I'm getting a full range of tones here. If I was really uh, getting excited, I might even do a couple of these and mask in a perfect uh, adjustment for the light lines and a perfect adjustment for the dark, intense stuff. But uh, this should do a pretty good job right here. So with one one type of adjustment layer. Go here now. Next thing I want to do is sharpen because sharpening is a great tool to clean this up, but I I don't want to sharpen on, I'd have to be sharpening on the original image and the adjustment layers would be added on. I want to use the effect of the adjustment layers as a final, um, final result when I sharpen so that I'm actually sharpening the entire uh, sum total of all my adjustments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go in stages here. I'm going to go, oops, down to image and duplicate this one. So this is copy two. And now if I come in here, there's the same image, but I'm going to flatten this out here. So go down here to layers, go to flatten image, discarded layers. Of course, there we are, one one layer only, and that way when I sharpen it, it applies it to everything. So we'll go here to uh, Filter, Sharpen, use the Unsharp Mask tool, and now I can see um, this is the effect of my sharpening. So let's turn the amount way up here to see what the maximum we could get is. The threshold um, tells us how much difference it's going to be sharpening. And the radius, 
We have a pretty high resolution scan. I might mention that this is a 1200 pixel per inch scan, so uh, you have to get a pretty big number before you start seeing the radius kick in here. Um, but that radius can be pretty handy because it can kind of accentuate the the difference. Look at the the little bits of noise uh, in these areas here. That's the paper versus the negative dots in the, the actual line drawing. And if I bring the radius up a bit, well, first we see the sharpening take effect and it accentuates all the paper noise. So we get it big enough to where, the, to where the sharpening is kind of overriding the the little tiny pieces here. So maybe we go to this point here where it's not beating up the the negatives. There's still a little bit of paper texture, but that's pretty safe. I'm going to pull it down a little bit, see if that makes any difference. It kind of brings the original back. I think I'll just leave it um, cranked up about that much. Okay, so that is sharpening. Now Bruce, uh, Bruce Fraser and David Blattner would they might even recommend you do a couple rounds of uh, sharpening. A lot of times they'll do a fairly low-key sharpen effect a couple times rather than one big heavy one. Um, I think we're okay with one big heavy one right now. And then there's one more adjustment we're going to do. This gives us one more chance to make a little bit of value uh, value change here. So this is threshold. This says every pixel in this image is either black or it's white. There's no gray left. And so you can dial in the place where this takes takes effect. And so if I come in here and I go way up this way, at a certain point I start to see that paper noise coming back in. I want to get to where that isn't happening. If I go down the other end, I start seeing the paper noise in the in the dark areas coming back. So Kind of pull right in here in the nice happy middle ground where I'm not losing too much in the fine detail and I'm not losing too much in the dark detail. I click OK. <clears throat> we zoom in here. You see no more gray. These are just black and white pixels. And then I'm going to go from an 8 bit grayscale scan into mode. Instead of grayscale, I go to bitmap. This changes every pixel from 8 bits of information to 1 bit of information, meaning color or no color. And we're going to leave it at the scanned resolution, which is 1200. This is meant to go straight into your image setter. No halftone dots will be made. It's just going to make um, spots of output onto a plate, a piece of negative, onto a laser print, uh, whatever you've got. So kaboom, there we go. It's now a one bit image. And with 1200 spots of that per inch, when you output that on a laser printer to check it, all of these things that appear kind of jaggedy here are going to look pretty good. They're going to look like uh, nice smooth pen lines. And you will be amazed. So there is your conversion to uh, one bit from a grayscale scan of a very intricate um, pen and ink drawing. Okay, so have fun with that.